Hello painters, it's Debbie from acrylicpouring.com back for a little bit of painting fun today. I don't know how long you've been watching my channel but you might remember this one. This is an old vinyl record and it was one of my earlier projects actually. I completed it with a black background and then I blew some red, orange and yellow to try and make like a uh, a flame effect going through the center. This is still one of my husband's favorites. He likes this one a lot and um, we've often got this one out on display, although I mix and match and I swap them around. And I thought I would like to revisit this one today um, and do it on a canvas. So I've already got a 12 inch canvas prepared. And as you can see, I've just painted some black around the sides so that I don't have to worry about my paint going over. I don't have to worry too much about getting um, complete coverage over the sides. I've also got my squeezy bottles. So I've got a nice bright, well actually it's quite a deep red. It's a nice red. Then I've got my usual bright orange. I've got a chrome yellow. Then I've got a lemon yellow and a titanium white. And the lemon yellow and the white are additions because I didn't have those on the last one and I still may not use them. I want to see um, how it goes, but I've got them there if I want to add actually something um, brighter to it. So we'll see. And also today I've got my hair dryer because I've been watching a lot of people do their resin art and I've been quite fascinated to watch them move around the resin and the pigments and everything with the hair dryer. So I thought I would try and use that technique today with some acrylic paint and see if I can blow the paint with my hair dryer to make flames. So we will see. So let's start with um, a layer of black. This is just um, black acrylic paint mixed with 50% Floetrol and then some water. And I'm going to just lay this on here. It doesn't have any silicon in it because I don't want any um, cells. I want the, the, oh goodness, I want the black paint to nice, hopefully be as flat as possible. So I'm going to try out my hair dryer first of all and see if I actually move this around now with the hair dryer because if that doesn't work then obviously it'll be a no-go for the other paints. So put something in your ears because I'm about to turn my hair dryer on now. Okay, well that kind of works, but you seem to have to have quite a lot of paint for it to move about. And I managed to stick my hairdryer in the paint. So I'm just gonna wipe this up. So I can see that the hairdryer will move the paint, so that's good. But I think what I'll do is just use my palette knife to spread around this black for the background. And then we will see what I can do with the colors in the hairdryer. But I've got my straw on hand, so in the event that it's really not working out, um, my hairdryer really isn't that powerful, then um, I will revert back to using the straw and we'll see what we get. I was hoping that with um, using the hairdryer, I'd be able to blow the paint a bit more than I could with a straw and I would get more of a, um, oh, I've got a lump, more of a, a flamey effect. Um, you know, uh, just a, a bigger effect really. I've still got a lump, I see, I got it. Um, so I was looking for a bigger effect by using the hairdryer. Oh, is that another lump? Ah, here's my nail. Oh, I hope this is gonna dry nice and smooth, but time will tell. Okay, so I've got a good layer of black. It's kind of nice and wet and smooth. So I'm gonna lie out my colors. And um, whereas before I had them going across the center, this time I think I want it to come up from the bottom. So probably, um, do I want it like a, like a fire shape like this or more random? Let's go with the random. So we let's put some red on here. It's sinking in quite a lot. I probably should not be using so much force. It's just a little bit looser. I'll put some bits up like this already and maybe they will replicate a slight look of flames and then let's see what my hair dryer does, does to this so I've got a, a cool shot button let's see if I can bring it over I've got a cool shot button so I'm holding the button in while I'm putting the hair dryer on high because I don't want to heat the paint and dry it 
just want to hopefully move it about. So let's see what happens. Yeah, not really enough. I need to direct this a little bit more. Oh, and I still managed to get it in the paint. So let me clean that up and I will see what I can do to try and make more of a, a concentrated um, nozzle. Because I haven't got an adapter. So let's see what I can manufacture. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> as you can see, my improvisation skills have come to the fore. And with a little bit of tape and a funnel, I have made um, my air hopefully more concentrated. So let's see what is going to happen. I think I will start with it on low. Yep, low's not cutting it, it needs to be on high. Let's go for it. Plug your ears. Okay, now high is pretty high, and that makes quite a lot of difference. A lot of my red and my black have all kind of mixed in together. So I think I want a bit more red. And we'll put it up here, higher in the painting. And uh, maybe a bit more up into these higher areas. And at the same time, I'm going to layer a bit of orange on there too, because I want to, these colours to start mixing now. So let's put a little bit of orange a bit down here. Plug your ears and let's see what we get. Well, it's pretty cool. I'm getting a lot of really crazy effects, lots of cells, but I've got a lot of paint here now. So it's going all over the floor. Um, what more can I do? I think I need to put my hair dryer to one side. Now that I've got so much going on here already, I think using the hair dryer is a bit too much. I'm gonna put that to one side and revert back to my trusty straw and see if I can, um, save this a little bit because I think it's a bit over over mixed and I'm not getting the separation of colors that I want so let's see what I can do I've got too many cells in a way I probably shouldn't have used paint with them um, so much silicon in it because I've got a lot of cells more probably than I need so
Okay, I like it. Uh, it didn't turn out exactly as I was expecting. The hair dryer was kind of too much for it. It was either not enough or it was too much. I find it hard to control. But anyway, let's take a look at some of the details and then we'll have a look when it's dry too. So there it is. I think that's pretty damned cool. Not very flamey. Not as flamey as I got my record, I think, the first time. I think there's a bit too much paint. Um, and obviously once I put the hair dryer on it, I kind of over mixed it a little bit, I think, to start with. So I was on a loser from then on, trying to make it look overly flamey. But some of the details on here are really, really cool. And I think the colours are nice. So hopefully when it dries, the uh, huge volume of paint on here isn't going to crack too much and we will see what it looks like. So here it is finished. It's okay, should we say. It's not as nice as I was hoping. Uh, a lot of the, the lighter yellow and the white down here, they sank down through as the painting was drying. And up at the top, I think it's not as vibrant as I would like. So um, I enjoyed doing it and I had a lot of fun. But I think using the nozzle on the hair dryer was just a bit too much. Everything got a little bit too churned up. There was too much paint. Um, and I'm not counting this as one of my more successful pours. So this is such a nice canvas that I really think I can do better. So I'm going to re-pour this one. And you will see this canvas in another episode, hopefully transforming into something new. Thanks very much for watching.